Hello, everyone, and welcome to the July 28th edition of Trips and Traps, our first Saratoga edition of Trips and Traps. I'm Richard Migliori, joined by my main man, partner in crime, Ernie Munich. Well, Ernie, the scenery's changed, oh. but the faces stay the same. The scenery. If there's a more beautiful backdrop for a racing show, I have not seen it yet. Well, it is terrific, and we got a lot to talk about. Not surprisingly, we've got five races. Four of them are on the turf. Turf racing lends itself to trips. But let's start off with the opening day feature, the Schuylerville. And we are going to be looking at number one, Olive Branch from the Rick Violet Barn. And Olive Branch broke well, and I think Jose Ortiz tried to do the right thing and go forward to get position. So we're going to keep an eye on her, Ernie. And maybe we should start off by saying that this was a day that I think was decidedly in favor of outside horses, Mig. I mean, it's, of course, it's debatable, but the rail really looked off, and she never got away from it. No, and, and part of that, obviously, is she had post one. And yes. I think he did the right thing, Jose Ortiz, coming out running, trying to get the field to commit. You want speeds to commit. She basically got stuck in there and never had an opportunity to get off the rail, and it's an uncomfortable position for a two-year-old. Mm. Now, she showed a lot of professionalism at first start taking dirt, yes. but she wasn't buried in behind horses and you know, basically glued to the rail in that start. It's very interesting to me because... You know, this is a situation where the jockeys seem to have zero options. I mean, what, what else could Jose do? This is has no fault of his where he is. He can't take all the way back on this distance, right? He's in the blue there behind the leader, and he you can see he wants to get out. But like you said, it's through no fault of his own. He's got horses now rallying to the outside. He can't come out and split them there. He's kind of looking for room. She's a little intimidated, I thought, in between horses here. Yeah. Now he's got to take care of the horse inside him before he can dive back to the rail. All in all, this was a very tough journey for a young horse, but a journey that I think will make this a better racehorse as we go forward. I really now I guess we can be a little concerned that you know how their babies, how fast is the race? Da, da, da. But she she kept digging in there on that rail. You did not see that that day. No, you didn't see it, and she didn't just quit. She didn't cave in. Now the winner was good. I'm not taking anything right. away from her. Another thing to factor into Olive Branch's race and her day. She acted up a bit in the paddock, and she mm. pulled the shoe off, and she had to be reshod in the paddock. It's a very unsettling thing for a horse of any age, that let is. alone a two-year-old in her second start. So going forward, I think Olive Branch, a little better in the paddock, doesn't have to be reshod, maybe gets a little better post. Olive Branch definitely belongs with this group of horses. She had a tough day. Oh, man, all those factors involve much evidence. I am betting her back. And no matter what the field is, we'll let it ha happen. I agree. I, I think she belongs with this group. She just didn't have – she woke up on the wrong side of the stall. How's that? I love it. Love it. Okay, well, let's move on forward. July 23rd, race seven, and we are on the turf. We're going to be looking at number two in ordinate. Breaks, okay. Not terrific, but okay. And just a little bit slow into stride. And here he is in the famed Judmont colors, inordinate. And now, to me, he worked out an okay trip. I just don't think there's much pace on. And he never really was able to get position when he didn't kind of jump with it right at the start. It's an interesting situation here, Mick, because once again, this is now the fourth time in this country that in Inordin has not gotten pace. And to, to use steel, another line of yours, some horses have that big turf, that the, the incredible turf with the quick acceleration. This is not one of those horses. We've never seen the big acceleration, so falling farther back, Mick, does not seem conducive to his style. And we're just going to keep an eye on him here. I don't want people to lose sight of him. I'm going to show you, though, where the, the eventual winner is. And him, Ascend, being able to get position. Now, Javier Castellano on, on Inordinate has several horses in front of him where Johnny Velasquez is laying third in that perfect spot, and he doesn't have as much to do. You've said before, for instance, like a horse like Vulcan Forge, who just, you just, no matter what you said, Johnny's trying to get him in the game. He couldn't get him in the game. Is this a case of Javi trying to get the horse in the game, but he's still falling far back? Well, he's keen now, so it's not as though he, he, he doesn't have horse underneath him. Mm. It's the first 50 yards, and that's what establishes his position. As, and now as we're heading to the turn, we want to keep an eye on him. And again, here's the eventual winner. It's just a contrast in trips that I thought was interesting. And I agree with you about Inordinate not having a big turn of foot. I think he'd be better served going a mile and a quarter or better. I 
was you, I, Nick, I was just going to say that his best race here was going the mile and an eighth when he got up. I completely agree. Longer, closer to the pace, and just keep grinding away. Yeah, and you can just see. Look, Johnny Velasquez is basically able to slide out of this pocket when he wants to. And Javier's having to work to get to the position, try to follow him. And he's a horse that's not going to accelerate as quickly. So the gaps are actually moving just a touch faster than you. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting. And, you know, this he's going to finish it. He doesn't finish great, but, again, he doesn't have that kind of move in him. At least he hasn't shown that so far. Looks like he got a little intimidated there. He kind of jumped to his left lead and run away from the 10 horse. He winds up back down on the rail. I don't think it was as glaring a no. trip as we're going to see coming up. No. But I think subtly, this is a horse that you want to follow back going further. You know, sometimes up here in Saratoga, they run a mile and three sixteenths. That would fit mm. him, I think. I think that would be right in his wheelhouse. Long run to the first turn. Let him get in his stride. Mm. I don't think he's a real handy horse where a mile and a sixteenth suits him on a course like this. No, and the, the good thing is the price will go up. The bad thing is not much because he's Chad Brown. Yeah, Chad Brown and... and He'll have a high-profile rider on him, whether it's Javier Always. or Irad or, you know, well, Chad doesn't ride guys that can't ride. Creme de la creme. A exactly. Well, let's turn the page. July 23rd, same day, race eight. Rappel, a horse that's been a guest before on Trip yes, to Trap. Yes. Number seven. Kind of turning his head a little at the break. Still got away okay. I thought Manny Franco was leaving for some position here. And winds up getting shuffled back. Now, this is a balancing act for a jockey, Ernie. You can't let them run all out into that first turn because it's so tight you lose control. So now he tried to do the right thing, come out for position, but now he's got to get him in his hands. And Rappel is somewhat keen, second time with blinkers, maybe not as tractable as, as you know he would like it, but you're going to see he's consistently and constantly steadying on heels basically the entire trip. It's This is a, a very interesting horse, and I, I really hope we score on this horse because you mentioned earlier that this is the second time we've seen him. We're you know, look at the short comments. Traffic, bumped early, steady, bobbled. This horse is a bit of a trouble seeker, but there's talent there, and we've seen it all along. The question is where does he best belong? It's a great question. I think he has ability. I think he is difficult to ride. Uh, I do think he's a trip, not a trap. But You do. You yes, do. Yes. yes. But is he a horse that consistently lends himself to getting bad trips? Uh, yeah. I, I, I can't blame Manny Franco. I mean, he's trying to do everything right. You know, the fans and, and people wagering on this want you to save ground. And if you get through, you're a hero. <laughs> it, it, and if you get stuck, you're a bump. If they want you in the clear, but if you get forced wide, and, and we can see he's searching, he's crying out for some place, and a lot of times, you know, you need that break. You you need some place to go. You can see he's just fighting for an inch at this point. And it gets worse. You're going to see it right in there. I mean, it's just. Well, now you got the outside runners with momentum. He's kind of buried in there. You know what this feeling's like, Ernie? No, have you ever, I do not. Have you ever been at the beach and a big wave comes and out of nowhere and curls over you and just consumes you? Wow. That was the wave consuming Rappel as they turned for home. And again, Jockey wants to save ground, especially on a 7 8 turf course. If he gets stuck, oh, what's he doing? He gets through. What a ride. He goes wide and gets up. They say, oh, he did the right thing. Got him in the clear. Goes wide and doesn't get up. Why was he wide? It's 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 a Can't hard win. job. I'm telling you from personal experience. Blame the jockey. Blame, blame the jockey. Blame, blame the jockey. This was for eighty five thousand, so that you, you, no one's happy. I can't imagine what it's like, Mig, in a graded stakes or even a grade one stakes. To, oh, boy. Well, you know what I mean? To have that happen to you with so much money on the line, then having to go back and tell the trainer, well, well, well. well you know the be best thing a trainer could do in a situation like that? Pat the guy in the back and say, we'll get him next time. Because you start jumping around changing jockeys. What happens is you're in there riding a good race, and the trainer's in your mind. It's, it's like oh having that, that little devil on your shoulder poke you. And what are you doing? What are you doing? And by the time you think about the trainer, you've made a mistake. Right. You, you know, the best thing a trainer can do is free a guy up to ride his race. You're riding him because you've got confidence in him, right? right? Yeah. So let's turn the page one more time. Another turf race. And this is Sunday, July 24th, race six. We are looking at number seven, the Regally bred Tap It Together. Breaks okay. Kind of, you know, 
I wouldn't say bumbles out of the gate, but didn't break in stride. I think that'd be a fair way to assess it in that famous Augustan stable uh, colors. Yes, and there's a lot of pulling right here. You can see the high stepping and the and the and the rankness. And Mig, I think she qualifies as a super mating. Top it and forever together. I think qualifies as a super mating. Yeah, no, no doubt. I mean that that that's just two of the, you know. What Forever Together together did as a racehorse, what Tappet's done as a sire. Amazing. Yeah, pretty outstanding. I think this horse is rank. I think this horse is difficult. I think this horse has blinkers for a reason because, you know, you would think, well, take the blinkers off. You know, maybe it won't be as rank. But if Michael Matt put blinkers on this horse, there's a reason this horse is blinkers. Yeah, absolutely. You just know. I mean, it's like telling a master, oh, hey, have you, by the way, have you tried this? It's very interesting, Mick, because with this all this pedigree, it doesn't ensure you're not going to get a tricky horse, right? No. Well, sometimes you, you, you're they're so high strong or they're actually more difficult. It's like a, a, a spoiled uh, child from a wealthy family, right? Isn't that so, yeah. wow. um, and, and listen, maybe that's not fair. I don't know this filly. I just know that it doesn't look like she's a lot of fun to ride. Every time he tries to put his hands down, she really grabs a bit and tries to run up on top of horses. And there's nothing he can do. He's surrounded. Where is he supposed to go? Um, and he's trying his best to pick his way through the field and find what I would call live cover, a horse to follow. Yeah, and you know she she kind of gets gets some momentum mid stretch, but then make it appears as though she wants to lug in again. Well, keep a particularly close eye on her head carriage and her body shift, the momentum that goes to the inside. She does try to lug in right in here. See, she she that breaks a horse's momentum at a critical time in the race. You want to go forward. Now, one thing I will question, and I I think Florence Drew is a terrific young rider, welcome addition here in Saratoga. Why he went at her consistently right-handed and having to straighten her up there? I think I might have got at her left-handed at some point, try to get her to pan back out to her right lead and go forward. I'm splitting hairs with that. I am going to tell you, I believe this horse is a trap. What, very interesting. I think this horse is difficult, and I think she's going to consistently get herself in tough spots. Is Do trainers welcome a horse? I mean, obviously with that pedigree, of course they welcome a horse like that, but do they consider this a challenge or a headache to have a horse with this much pedigree who's got some talent but is a little goofy? I think if you started out as the trainer of this horse, the horse comes to the barn. You go, my gosh. We've got to tap it at a forever together. It, it, you're overwhelmed. It's, it's, you're excited, <laughs> and now she's a headache. Wow. That's, that's what I think. Yeah. Now, if she went to somebody else's barn now at that pedigree, it would become a challenge. Isn't that something? But yeah. I, I think this horse has ability, but I question her, her power steering, so to speak. Yeah, it looks very complicated. It looks like a, horse, a, 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 a girl who's going to have the jockey get blamed a lot. Right. Well, uh, you know what? And I say that I'd love a crack at her, but yes, that's I know not that. going to happen. That's definite. Same day, July twenty fourth, race seven. We are looking at number four, Captain's Affair, and uh, horse breaks okay, kind of bobbled a little bit. Position is so important in these turf races, and basically, he gets no position, and and partly because of that little skip and bobble at the break, and. He wasn't as keen, but keen enough. And keep an eye into the turn here. Julian's got to let him go forward enough to hold his spot. You can't allow those horses to get three-quarters of the length on you and drop over. So he had to give his horse a little bit of rain to go forward, but now it kind of set him off, made him a little keen. Yeah, I can see. And there's still pulling going on, as everyone can see right now. And, and, uh, and Mig, as you always say, when they start fighting like that, it, it's not the most encouraging thing for the horse. No, and I think Julian did a good job. The horse kind of flipped his head, and then he was able to put his hands back down and get the horse to. And I always want to show the horses after we come out from behind the trees so people can continue to follow along if, if they lose them. It's interesting now as we get closer to the turn. Jockey 101. You can't allow your horse to run inside of a horse on the as you're getting to the break of the turn. You've either got to be able to get all the way up in there or all the way out of there. You can't be three-quarters of a length inside because you will get bounced off the rail and every young jockey knows that early on and if they don't learn it after they bounce off the fence a time or two and and this is what i'm talking about he's gonna i think people say well he was backing out there well he's backing out because he does not have the right of way he doesn't belong in that place if he goes all the way in there he's going to hit the rail do you think jockeys are spending putting too much importance in saving ground Maybe we watched a couple of trips today where we've seen these repeated burials now 
is it worth losing the ground to have the clearer trip? Or I know it's a judgment and it's a, every horse is different. But we've seen a lot of horses get buried here today. But I think what lent itself to them getting those tough inside buried trips was not having position into the first turn. So mm -hmm. basically, it's dictated to you where you are. Now, two of them we saw that the horses didn't break particularly well. Right. And, and, and that's what led them to being out of position in the turn. Then they got keen. The one race, Rappel, in hindsight, maybe Manny Franco should have gone forward. Well, that horse has a little more speed well, going at this. He broke clean, and, he, and yes. he was laying third, and then by the time he got to the turn, he was sixth. Hmm. He got his position going backwards. If you have an opportunity, particularly on these turf courses here at Saratoga, get your position going forwards. It makes a huge difference. And maybe there's more space in that in that area to come out if you need to come out, as opposed to when you drop all the way back. Well, exactly. Now you've got to fight your way through traffic. Think about yeah. rush hour. You know, you, you you get in behind a bunch of slower cars, yeah. and, and you're pulling your hair out. You want to get home to dinner, but there's no place to go. Yeah, you're pulling your hair out. Well, I got no, I got nothing <laughs> to work with. Sorry. Didn't mean that. No, I'm used to it. <laughs> I'm used to it. Well, again, we can always use your help. It's Trips and Traps at NairaInc.com.